Hey everyone, today we're going to be watching a YouTube video that I uh, really wanted to watch. It's called I Made a Terrifying Home Security System. All right. How you going? This is my mate's house, which, as you can see, doesn't work very well. And he doesn't know who burnt his house down. Police are tonight hunting an arsonist who targeted the home of controversial, friendly Geordie's YouTube blogger. But I promised to help him by making a terrifying security system which would prevent anyone from coming near his house ever again. Now, I've always wanted to make a horrible home security system, and Jordan's house getting burnt down was actually just a great excuse for me to pretend I'm helping by making what a goal to have. Anyway, a face tracking paintball turret. And to start this build, I did what I always do and went online and just found someone that had already made it this child. I then stole their design and code without giving them any credit. Now the child is using two motors to move the nerf turret up and down and side to side. And I reckon if I just upgrade the motors and wooden frame, it should work in the same way, even with a much heavier paintball turret. And to do this, I bought a much more expensive material that children can't get their hands on. Meth. Which I pressed in. Then I took it to my only mate that hasn't had his house burnt down yet and used his custom built CNC machine to cut out the frame. And while the machine is doing all the work, I'll tell you about Jordan's place being burnt down. Jordan, or Friendly Geordies, makes videos about Australian politics, a lot of the times about corruption within the government. And as you would expect, this has pissed quite a lot of really powerful people off. And recently, he spoke to a whistleblower named Troy, who revealed the extent of money laundering that happens in Australian clubs on poker machines, and how the people that are meant to regulate this choose to ignore it. And we actually demonstrated this by laundering $25,000 in a single day with Jordan. But after Jordan spoke to this whistleblower, his house mysteriously got firebombed, and that meant that Jordan had to go into hiding. But now Jordan's back, and just released a video explaining what happened and who he thinks might be responsible. So you should go check that video out after this. But this also means he definitely needs security. And why would you rely on police when you have me? Am I able to just pull these off now? Yeah. Nope. Use your angle too. I'm not strong. Yeah, just do that one. Okay, once the pieces were all cut out, I put them together. This bearing in here, this servo on the bottom, which will move the base around, this one on the side for the up and down motion, this Arduino, these bolts on the bottom so I don't have to use any glue, then I screwed in this arm, and then put a leg on the other, and then finished it off with a little bit of hot glue to stop it creaking when it moves. Now, with this Arduino, I have no idea how to write code for it. But luckily, I don't have to, as the child's code should work on this in exactly the same. this webcam here from the 90s, which is connected to the Arduino, and then these two servo motors, which work together to move the webcam so it points directly at a person's face. It's finding me. Okay, let's see if I move to the side. This is terrifying. It finds my face so well. What about down here? What about me? What about up here? What about me? And then when your face touches the crosshair in the middle, the servo attached to the trigger fires. And it seems to find my face pretty well, but sometimes it gets confused by my wrinkly knees, thinking they are a face. Is it funny my knee? It's my knee, not a face. Or even my face-shaped penis. It's pointing directly at my cock. That's terrifying. And now that the machine wants to kill me, it's time to give it a go. And I bought this one, which looks pretty cool. And because of Australia's strict gun laws, it also has the added bonus of sending you to prison if you put this barrel attachment on, which makes it look too much like a real gun. Well, Alexa, do you reckon you can put this 
on the end of this. Yeah. yeah, just that way, just help me push it. I just can't do it because I got a camera in my hand. Yep, yeah. you push, and then just hold all of it. Yep. Yeah. And the plan is to attach it up here on these arms but I completely forgot about the gas tank. So hopefully it's weighted evenly and isn't too heavy for these servos. But I'm hopeful as these servos have 33 kilos of torque or in American units, enough power for half a school shooting, which should be more than enough. And this looks pretty intimidating when all together. This is terrifying. I definitely don't feel like firebombing my own house. So time to see if the face tracking still works with the gun and gas tank on the end. Oh, Alexa, do you reckon you can look up and tell me if this, this works? Just look into this and we'll see if it finds your face. Just, yeah, just keep looking there. Oh. <laughs> Why is it shooting? And even though it was firing blanks, it's still terrifying and is loud and my ears are ringing. So it's time to test it out with some real paintballs. But there's a problem. This is also illegal. Like, very illegal. If I put a ball in the turret and shoot it in my house, the police will come and give me a $100,000 fine, put me in prison, and then touch me, which is not what you want from a home security system. But my logic is, if you are actually defending yourself from a person wanting to firebomb you and potentially kill you, then this would be considered self-defense and must stand up in court. So just to be safe, I found a paintball venue crazy enough to let me legally test this device on their premises. Spitfire Paintball. Oh, now they said they didn't want to be in the video if I get in trouble with the police, but I won't actually find that out until after the video is released. So Spitfire Paintball everyone. Pretty good. I'm excited. Are, are you uh, proud of this contraption? Do you think that it's going to protect you? I think it's definitely going to protect you as long as you don't look at it. Like, you, because it's face yep. tracking. Yep. You just always have to be looking away. <laughs> and then you're going to be safe. So you're not programming in the faces of the enemies that you want. It's just any face. Any face. <laughs> and then you'll be fine. You just can't look at it. <laughs> How good do you think he is of a programmer? He, he can't do any of this. It's, it's all faces. Also, I didn't write this code. I stole it from a child on YouTube that, that made this for a Nerf gun. <laughs> but sadly, the owner did have one condition, and we needed to wear masks to prevent us from getting shot in the eyes. So the plan now is to get Jordan, his producer Christo, Alexa, and I to all wear shirts with the faces of people that might have a reason to burn down Jordan's house. That way we can also test if their inhumane looking faces are even recognized by the computer as real faces and also means we get shot in the chest. So time for the first real test, which I decided to do as a matador. <laughs> And that seemed to work really well, and it was searching for real faces to shoot. So I put on one of the face shirts and got in front of the turret. Okay, he looks like a mad butcher with that with that apron thingy. Who would shot like dense balls using this paintball? shooting Alexa directly in the face. <laughs> then it was Jordan's turn with the Gladys Berejiklian face. And the robot for some reason really struggled to recognize her as a human. But eventually it worked. It's just not And as you can see, it's actually quite hard to get hit. And to get the turret to actually shoot us, we had to flatten our shirts and walk very slowly towards the camera, which luckily is what most criminals are known to do before burning down people's houses. Why are your 
was so willed. And after comparing our battle wounds, of which Christo had the most, we decided to run through a scenario. Jordan would lie down sleeping like he normally would at home and we would try to sneak up to him with a petrol can and burn him alive. So now, enjoy Alexa, Christo and I being tortured. And I was hit first, but luckily my apron stopped me from feeling anything. And that almost seemed to piss off the turret and it decided to aim lower, and once again, kneecapped Christo. And the turret was working really well this time, as we were moving around and jumping in front of the crosshair a lot. But mostly, it actually just traumatized us so much that we didn't want to go anywhere near it. But fortunately for us, it crashed. So we took the opportunity to pour petrol all over Jordan, killing him. And then, to make it worse, just as his cameraman was asking Jordan if the turret made him feel safe. You feel safe? No, not at all. The turret crashed and shot Jordan in the neck. Oh. <laughs> So we decided to try it one more time. But just before we did, I looked down at my phone and noticed 11 missed call and multiple messages from my mum, letting me know that the New South Wales police had showed up at her doorstep and were searching her house. And I immediately thought it was because of this video I'm filming right now, but it turns out it wasn't. And they were actually there because of this video I made five years ago. And after telling the boys what was happening at my mum's house. There are police at my mum's house. I feel like I can't do anything else now. Uh, Wait, I think they're leaving. We all decided that my mum would be fine and we should continue with another group test. But this time, we decided to split up to give us better chances. And when we did this, the turret really didn't know what to do and it was missing a lot more. And Alexa and I managed to not get hit at all, but Christo once again stayed in one place for too long. before Alexa snuck around and burnt Jordan. And the robot once again failed to stop us. And maybe this was because the faces were too small and kind of wrinkled and hard to detect. Oh, you got oh, some man. good ones. So we decided to give the robot a bigger target and the boys drew John Barillaro's beautiful face on me. I mean, and I don't know if you can tell by the way I'm tensing and screeching like a goblin, but this is terrifying. Mostly because my mind is trying to keep me in one spot long enough for the turret to find the face so it looks like it's working for this video. But at the same time, my body wants to run away in the opposite direction, which resulted in me doing this strange up and down jump. I'm done. That one really hurt. That one hurts so much. So I've never seen your body tense that much in my life. Really? You're like, yeah, yeah. you look like a monster. It was disgusting. <laughs> and in one way, that worked really well, and all of us have some nasty wounds. But it wasn't enough to stop us from burning Jordan alive in all three tests. That was a very good one. I want to watch more of his his content.